la parole est à Jennifer Morgan, qui est euh, Climate and Energy Director de World Resources Institute. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the World Resources Institute is deeply com committed to respond to this crisis of climate change and to the needs of people. I think we are at a crucial moment in history right now, one where people will look back to determine whether we collectively were able to turn the corner just in time to put humanity on a more sustainable course. And one of the key questions is the one that you've asked today, which is whether we are able to connect this outside action that's going on with this process and the response that's occurring in these negotiations. We have cities acting, companies moving, banks shifting funds, civil society mobilizing hundreds of thousands of people in the streets around the world. How do we bring that in here to transform and, and create greater action now? Well, in the next year, I think the private sector, local governments should work together to lift up even greater initiatives that can bring real benefits to society uh, and to the climate. We've seen good progress here in Lima. We had eight Latin American countries on Sunday commit uh, to an initiative to restore 20 million hectares of degraded forest and farmland. The Compact of Mayors came forward with the GPC, a new climate standard to, uh, to, to position cities to do even more. Um, but we need more than that. We know the gap is large. I'm heartened to hear Peter Bakker's intervention about more uh, about workshops around the world really rolling up their sleeves and figuring out how they can make, make, a, make a difference. The other thing I think in the next year where, they, where companies and cities and stakeholders can make a big difference is engaging in the national contributions process that countries have to bring forward. What does a company need to see in the post-2020 contribution to shift their investments into clean and low-carbon technologies? What do cities need to see in order for the national frameworks that are being put in place to actually inspire and, and meet their visions uh, for what they're doing in amazing work around the world? How can clean energy services be provided around the world to those who do not have any access to electricity? I think it's also important to hear governments, governments to hear the growing number of actors supporting a clear long-term goal, whether it be 100% renewables, whether it be a phase-out to net zero. We have economists, we have business, we have the religious community, we have civil society. Lima can open the gate to the voices of real people making real change. It can do that in two ways this week. Decide to continue we these types of high-level dialogues. They are needed and bring and connect these dots and in the weeds, sir, we need to allow uh, observers to officially pose questions to countries about their national contributions. That's an issue this week. So voices around the world are rising to the challenge. Let's give them this voice in this process to tra transform our societies. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.